Hi everybody. I'm just going to go through some articles, some documents, some videos that really reflect where we as a people are today. I'm sorry, but we are part of the problem. Yeah, the majority of Americans who just sit back and do nothing and really don't care, it it has manifested a horrible nightmare. And I know that a lot of people get angry when I say that, but if you are not looking at how you have contributed to this nightmare, all of the years that we were, you know, just not doing a thing, not really awake to anything, you know, that that is our contribution. So we did get awake, however we did become awake, and I don't like that term because it's so black and white. No, it's an awakening. I'm awake to a certain level, but somebody else is far more awake than I am. Uh, there are other people who are less awake than I am. So, you know, it's about knowledge. How much knowledge? How much, how much awareness do you have? Self-awareness as well as collective awareness. It's not just the awareness of what is taking place in Washington, D.C. It's the awareness that you have within your own community and your own awareness. And when you have awareness of yourself, you can see how you contributed to this nightmare, how you may still be contributing to the nightmare, if you're not actively participating in your own communities, well, then you are a part of the problem. Yeah, how many are going to click off this video? Well, I don't care. Um, the video that I posted last night, Show Me Baby, in Missouri, going down to Houston with others to try to prevent the government officials from taking away tents from the homeless in Houston. I was uh, given this link by my friend in Houston and so let me just veer off for one second and tell you what she told me yesterday when I spoke to her. She has a friend who lives 20 miles north of San Diego, kind of close to the lilac fire, or at least, you know, smoke entered her area from, from that fire. And when she was talking to her, she said that she was really concerned about, you know, the thousands of people who were evacuated. Where did they go? What, what, we haven't heard any information. And her friend said, oh, don't worry. They are, they're well cared for in military camps. So I have been unable to verify what, my friend heard from her friend in California. But if anybody has heard anything about the evacuees going to military camps where they are well cared for, that is a very concerning statement to hear from somebody who lives in that area. Now she lives, my friend lives in Houston. My friend had her home flooded deliberately from the release of the uh, reservoirs reservoirs from the Army Corps of Engineers. And if they had not released those reservoirs, she would still be in her home. So she is suffering the consequences of that manufactured quote-unquote hurricane, which was not a hurricane. It was uh, the use of technology to hold those clouds over Houston to flood it out and the surrounding areas. So we very often talk about you know, the major cities, because that's what we hear from mainstream media. But no, there were a lot of areas on the coast. So many people have lost their homes. In fact, over a million homes were flooded August, September, which means that a million people, um, or hundreds and hundreds, the high hundreds of thousands, are still not in their homes. Where are they? I've posted videos 
Many people have gone homeless. Many people are living in their cars, tents. So Houston now, well, a judge, a federal judge, cleared the way for Houston city officials to enforce an ordinance that prohibits homeless people from setting up tents and temporary living quarters in public places. And the judge also denied a request for a preliminary injunction. There is a lawsuit that is ongoing in Houston by some, uh, the ACLU in Texas is representing four homeless people. The argument is that this ordinance denies the constitutional rights of the homeless people and effectively makes homelessness illegal in Houston. So the judge denied a preliminary injunction to just rule on this matter of law enforcement taking away the tents after the lawsuit is uh, decided. The judge, this is what he said, while this court is indeed sympathetic to the impact that enforcement of the encampment, encampment ordinance on unsheltered homeless individuals poses, the court recognizes the city's police powers to enact and enforce reasonable legislation that promotes the health, safety, and general welfare of all Houston residents. Well, it does not promote the health, the safety, and the general welfare of the homeless. You take away the tent, the only shelter that they have, and then they are out in the cold. It is New Year's Eve. It is winter. And this judge believes that this is reasonable legislation to be enforced now. Now. Do you know what the Houston mayor said about Hurricane Harvey? It was a bump in the road. It was a bump in the road. And it has kind of complicated the homeless situation. It's a bump in the road. Over a million people had their homes flooded. Harvey increased the homeless population. And it's a bump in the road. Well, this guy has his home, and he's warm, and he's well fed. The judge believes that this is reasonable. Please understand that the judge, the mayor, law enforcement, they're all ordinary Americans working for the wrong side. It's sickening to see this happen. So uh, now when you take away the tents, the homeless now are at risk of being arrested for being homeless, ticketed, they can get ticketed and face fines up to $500. That's reasonable. What homeless person has $500? And I can't stand reading these. It's not a constructive po public policy solution. Don't even go to that language, public policy solution. This is so grossly inhumane. And that these ordinances are actually on the books and being enforced by Americans, it reflects how heartless and cruel this country has become. So the residents of nearby neighborhoods are complaining that the condition amounts to a hazard because of large amounts of feces and urine on the ground. Well, in reading that, I thought to myself, okay, well, wouldn't it be more reasonable to provide porta potties rather than take away the tents? How is that going to reduce the feces in the urine? In fact, it may even increase it because you may really now piss off these homeless people, right? And they get pissed off at those who are complaining, those who are comfortable, those who are living in warm homes. This is deliberate. I'm sorry. It's winter time. It's easy for the city to just provide porta potties or 
How about that six-point plan that the mayor released to the public in March of 2017? It was, well, I'll get to that six-point plan in just one second. But one of the points was to move some of the homeless to a plot of land at a bus depot where they can find security and shelter. That could have been easily done. Easily done. This plan was released March 2nd, 2017 by the mayor of Houston. And there's no bullets to the point, so I had to try to figure out what are these points. Um, the center of the mayor's plan is the way home. The expansion of the way home, which is a coordinated housing initiative of 100 public and private organizations that has reduced overall homelessness by 57 percent over the last five years. Really? Half the homeless were found permanent housing in Houston over five years. I I have a problem with that figure. It's kind of like Utah saying we virtually eradicated homelessness out of Utah, but it was all a lie. And then I posted videos on the homelessness in Houston or uh, Utah. Where are they going? What's going on? You know, so many people in areas of Utah, suddenly the homeless are disappearing and they're really concerned what's happening to them. Where are they going? Now, I know that a lot of you are also asking, asking, especially after these weather events, these manufactured weather events, what, where are all of the people going? And you do have to wonder if they are being taken to quote unquote military camps. Did my friend's friend in California mean FEMA camps? Um, so these points, all right, the way home. I checked out the way home. What is the way home? The way home, I found this article about the way home, but this is just a mainstream media article, and if you click read, it's February 7, 2017, and their, their site, Donate Now, right? The Way Home, the partners, these are the partners that apparently um, half or 57% of Houston's homeless found permanent housing. Try to find the permanent housing. Where is this permanent housing? But these are all of the organizations that are involved in this coordinated effort to help the homeless and when you look at this list, you would think, well, Jesus, all of those people involved? Why do you have any homeless in Houston? Um, so the other points, well, let me take, I have to do this home. Okay, here's their home page, The Way Home. Partners of The Way Home are preparing for Hurricane Harvey stay up to date on shelter options and other resources by clicking here the way home the way home december 18 2017 was applauded given an award by the mayor for providing 548 permanent homes 548 homeless individuals got permanent homes from the way home. This is December 18. And it was provided within six months, which is part, that's one of the points that the mayor had said to expand the way home to create permanent housing for 500 within six months. And wow! Man, your mayor is good, huh? He got that done. Really, where are these homes? 
So the other points are, um, let's see, investing in new permanent supportive housing units. So, well, I guess that goes into the first point to expand the way home to provide the permanent housing. Um, to call upon landlords with vacant units to step forward. Maybe those landlords stepped forward. By August, he wanted the Star of Hope campus to be finished, which would provide 215 shelter beds. It's a campus providing 215 shelter beds. You know, here, Houston has a charitable charitable feeding ban. It's illegal to feed the homeless. And some residents are fighting that ordinance. Those residents, one said, we're just trying to make sure a fellow human doesn't starve. It shouldn't be against the law to help people. Right? Absolutely. But Houston City Council passed the charitable feeding ban to ensure homeless people receive food prepared under health code regulations and so those in need will turn to an organization. No, they're forcing the homeless to turn to organizations that provide the services and the shelter. Oh, but the shelters provide beds for 150 people, but they have thousands homeless. The recorded number, I think, is 300 and, uh, or 3,600 people homeless. Now, I'm sorry, that bump on the road the mayor talked of, Hurricane Harvey, it made an awful lot more homeless. But when you have shelters that provide beds for 150 people and you've got thousands, you can't fit all of the homeless into the shelters, and then you pass laws that, God forbid, if you don't go by these laws, you will face a $500 fine for violating the ban. If you don't pay, you go to jail. And you got to get approval from the city. You got to ask mommy and daddy if it's okay if you go out and help the less fortunate. This is such a sick, twisted country. And it's not just Houston. These laws are being passed all over the country. In fact, you know, San Diego, arrest. They're arresting the homeless. Other cities have made it illegal to feed homeless, made it illegal for homeless to sleep in public places. It's cruel. It's inhumane. It's so grossly immoral, but it reflects all of us. And some of these other points. All right, so the, now... It, it jumps from 150 to uh, 365 beds. Pursue creation of one or more secure and professionally managed covered outdoor spaces with restroom facilities for 75 individuals. This was back in March. They could have done that. They could have done that already. And it would have given the homeless people who are living under highways and tents a place to go without being harassed. It would have helped the neighborhoods, those people who are comfortable and still have homes. They wouldn't have had to deal with the homeless population. Um, and none of this would be taking place. That was a very easy, quick solution. But they didn't get it done since March of last year. Something is very wrong with this, people, uh, with this picture. So the other one was outlawing tents on public property. But you can still sleep there. <laughs> you just can't sleep in a tent. And an anti-panhandling campaign that you all in Houston 
are paying for. Yes, it is a media campaign involving TV, radio, print, social media ads, street signage, billboards, and a way to donate to service organizations via text and online giving. You just can't give to individuals. You can only give to organizations that provide the services inadequately. Yes, give your money to these organizations that I guess have had success in, in creating homes, I guess. Uh, where these homes are, we don't know. Um, this is our country. You know, looking at Houston, you can see on the satellite all of the frequencies. You can see the grid patterns of the geoengineering, the aerosol spraying of chemicals and heavy metals and toxins. And it's all look right over Houston. Come on, Intellicast, work for me, please. But you can see the sawed off edges the straight lines, the very defined lines of this cloud substance, you know that it is not natural and you know you see it develop very very quickly if Intellicast would just work for me please Intellicast please come on move you're not moving you're not moving look at all of these lines evenly spaced frequencies and chemtrails together Boom. Create weather and unfortunately perhaps create gross apathy in an awful lot of Americans. So here it is moving. Okay, nothing there, nothing there, and then it just boom explodes. Wow. Cool, huh? You can see all of the geoengineering. Look at this. This was yesterday. United States, half of it looks like somebody dropped white paint out of planes and just covered half of the United States. This is not natural. It looks like there was a ruler that prevented the white paint from going any further west. You can see all of the geoengineering that is taking place and it was absolutely horrible yesterday right here in Anderson, South Carolina. And did I get sick? Yeah, I got sick. I am so sick of the obvious being ignored by an awful lot of Americans. So yes, it is exceedingly, exceedingly upsetting to not know what is happening with so many homeless, the expansion, the, the increase of homeless in our population. You have these cities saying we've reduced it 57% and, well, we don't know. It could just be an abject lie. But listen to this. Tell me if this doesn't reflect how dark our country has become. But please don't think that it's just those people in Washington, D.C. or the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers that have manifested this. We've all contributed and we continue to contribute when you have Communities around the country, their town councils, their city council, passing laws that are so grossly, disgustingly inhumane that could actually end up killing people by taking tent, the only shelter they have. You take that away? And it's not, it's an obvious non-solution. And the people in Houston, they're not outraged by this. 
those in the neighborhoods that are upset should just be demanding that they get porta potties or demand that your city get the plot of land for the homeless. Move them somewhere where they can still have access, you know, to um, whatever it is. Don't put them in a FEMA camp, but there are solutions. You don't just come up with a solution that will, that could be fatal. <laughs> Gee, oh, wow. Here. You know, people in the area knew the man was homeless and just walked by without a thought. Yeah, some people did stop to, but it wasn't to help. Tim Wessel was live with Travis and Anita Street. He's got the details. Tim? Now, apparently people were taking pictures of a man's body with their cell phones. That's according to police. He was found right there on the pavement near what's left of his belongings. Police say he had been dead at least 20 hours. Plenty of people passed by. Not one bothered to help. Wow. Man lying dead. The only people who stopped, they stopped to take pictures. You cannot tell me that the American people are not part of the problem and part of the nightmare that has manifested that they contribute. Um, yeah. Again, I'm going to say if you know of what is happening to those in California that have lost their homes, um, please leave a comment below. All links are below as well. Ciao, guys.